Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash, and double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, salutations, and blessings to the house of David, which is the elect, starting with the 144,000 prophets and the rest of the men, women, and children that are listening and learning, staying in the Holy Spirit, and keeping the faith of Yahweh Shai day in and day out. So I'm not too sure when I'm going to uh, title this, but, um, you know, I was just meditating uh, through the spirit on, uh, you know, just various different things. And, um, you know, just the importance of, uh, uh, you know, keeping up with the Joneses uh, spiritually. Right. And what I mean by that, um, you know, as you know, you know, that saying uh, keeping up with the Joneses, um, you know, means, you know, staying, staying uh, uh, up to date, you know, with the latest and greatest uh, technologies or, you know, the things, material things, you know, of, uh, you know, the world. Um, you know, when I looked up the the um, the idiom, it said basically, you know, trying to stay in competition with your neighbors. So, for example, if your neighbor got a, a, a you know, new TV, then, you know, you will go get a new TV or, you know, if your neighbor got some new uh, yard work done or, you know, change the landscape and then you will go do the same. So that was the the phrase keeping up with the Joneses mean. So, um, you know, of course, applying applying that spiritually, um, you know, really meaning to keep up with the the keep up to date with what is currently going on in the world. All right. And we understand that the things in the world and the uh, the the um, way things are moving is very quickly. Right. It's it's a lot of information, a lot of uh, prophecies. A lot of uh, various different, um, you know, things happening that if you're not constantly keeping up with it, then you could fall behind. You know, and, and just a small example of that is, you know, the whole, um, you know, various different bills that these uh, different countries and states are passing to, um, you know, attack, uh, you know, the freedom of speech. All right. And in the guise of of uh, trying to protect children and, and trying to protect, you know, victims of uh, uh, hate, uh, hate speech. OK, and um, if you're not aware of what's going on, then as Yahweh Shai said, that that day will come upon you as a thief in the night, which he said he's going to come like a thief in the night to uh, the world. Right. And, and why to the world? Because majority of the world is not prepared. Right. Majority of the world is not watching. Majority of the world is not keeping up with the the times all right and even the ones of people that do keep up with you know what's going on they if they're not they don't have the holy spirit and right if they're not in the truth then they don't really understand the significance of what is happening all right they don't understand the importance and or why it's happening which the why is just as important uh as the what okay you can know what is happening but if you don't know why it's happening then, you know, you're it, it's you're basically going to lose, you know, you're going to bug out. And that's what a lot of people are walking, you know, running right into. Right. They're running right into a, a predicament where they're in a a, a tribulous, you know, perilous uh, a situation and they don't understand why. All right. And the only ones that really do have the understanding are the ones that are in the uh, truth. Right. The only ones that that have the, the understanding, the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, which the, the Lord gives his words unto his servants, the prophets to do what? To warn the, um, you know, warn the sheep. OK, so like I said, um, we just wanted to get a couple of uh, scriptures on that and, and, you know, put this on wax and through the spirit to be edifying unto the elect because. We are in the times where, you know, soon enough, we're not going to be able to continuously uh, keep warning. Right. We're not going to be able to to keep letting the the the, the congregation. All right. The, the church, which the word church means the assembly of Israelites. Um, we're not going to be able to keep letting the, the body know what is, you know, uh, uh, what is about to you know take place or what is actually taking place right now. And. At that point, it's only going to be you and your faith and your knowledge, okay? And and, and really, your your knowledge and your faith, they work in tandem, 
Okay, the more knowledge you have in in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai and the the prophecies, the more faith you build. The more faith you build, then the more knowledge you seek. So it, it it's really like a you know a, a, a seesaw, right? It's a give and a take. So and then obviously in order to get that knowledge, you got to do what? You got to be continuously searching for. It. You got to continuously be looking out for these things, as the scriptures tells us. Let's get that. Um, in the book of, I believe it's either Ephesians or, uh, yep, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse, uh, let's start at 14. It says, wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and Hamashiach shall give thee light. Okay. Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead. So this is not speaking literal, right? <laughs> this is speaking spiritually. Right. Spiritually awake out of sleep. And that's what this world uh, and Esau, it, it, that's that's his, you know, one of his greatest weapons is to keep the the masses of the people, particularly and specifically Israelites asleep so that he can work his work. He can do his 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 left handed, you know, uh, uh, work, his wickedness. And if. If you're doing if you're doing wickedness and if so somebody's doing wickedness in your sleep, then to you it's like they're not doing wickedness. To you it's like it's, it never happened. But as soon as you wake up, you're in you're in this. You know that's why you watch movies, right? And you know uh, uh, let's say there's some some you know villain or some rapist or whatever you want to call it. Um, they a lot of times they will put their um, their victim. All right, to sleep before they actually start doing whatever they have plans to do. Okay, they show you that all the time. There'd be some, you know, robber that comes into the house or somebody that's trying to kidnap you, and then you know they'll uh, uh, put a um, a napkin over your face with you know chloroform on it, and then you pass out. So while you passed out, you have no idea what the hell is going on, right? You while you asleep, you have no idea, you know, what is about to what is actually happening to you. Uh, the perfect movie, uh, Saw. Right, the, the the Saw series. A lot of the times, what did he do? He would knock them out with with whatever, however he would do so, and then they would wake up in in in, in some type of contraption, and they find themselves in in a predicament, looking death in the face, and they can't escape it. And that's why it says in the book of First uh, Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, <laughs> that when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them, like a uh, travail come upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Because you're so in, you're so, uh, uh, you know, in, in waist deep, neck deep into the quicksand. When you wake up, there's no way for you to, to be able to escape out of it. The way to actually escape it is to avoid it. And the way to avoid it is by having the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai so that the Lord can guide your steps. So that the Lord, Yahweh through Yahweh Shai, can uh, uh, be your guide out of the trouble, all right, or, or keep you from the trouble, right? In the book of Second Ezra, chapter 16, uh, verse 70, let's go straight to the point, verse 74, uh, it says, Hear, O ye my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand. You see that? So the days of trouble are at hand. We're not saying that the days of trouble are not going to come. That's the con contrary. That's what these uh, soothsayers say, right? That's what uh, uh, these politicians say. That's what this world says and the people that speak of this world and the prophets that are the false prophets that this that these people choose. Actually, let's go to another scripture Um, in the book of, uh, I believe that will be in the book of Micah. Chapter two, verse 11, it says, if a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink, uh, he shall even be the prophet of this people. Right. In the gold in the NLT, it says, um, it says, suppose a prophet full of lies would say to you, I will preach to you the joys of wine and alcohol. That's just the kind of prophet you would like. OK, hey, uh, uh, prophesy unto us smooth things, prophesy unto us deceits. That's what 
this world wants to hear. They want to hear, you know, uh, uh, smooth things. They want to hear lies. They want to hear everything is going to be a okay. Although everything around them is saying the complete opposite. Okay. And that's why it's important for the ones who have the, the, the access to the truth to keep up with what's going on, to keep up, up with what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is telling you through the prophets, because the Lord is the one who sets up the prophets. All right. It, it's not us who set up ourselves. It's not us who gave, you know, uh, the energy, uh, the spirit behind us to, to go out and teach these things. All right. When you read throughout the scriptures, the Lord always said, I sent my prophets early B times rising up and sending them. All right. Warning them. Right. And, and what, what does the majority of our people do? They misuse the prophets. They ignore the prophets. Right. They 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 don't believe our report. OK. But at the end of the day, that does not stop what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is set forth to do, as it says in the book of Isaiah, that his word does not go out void. You see, the Yahweh Bashim Yahweh word does not go out void, but it accomplished that that what he set forth it to do. And that is the times that we're in right now. So let's go back to 2nd Ezra 16, verse 74. It says, Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for God power is your guide. Okay? So although we're prophesying of, of calamities, woes, perils, uh, Jacob's trouble, our temptation, uh, uh, you know, martial law, the economy collapsing, famine, the sword, pestilences, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, evils, right? And evil and only evils has come, all right? Evil meaning bad times. We're prophesying about bad times. And lo and behold, when you look out into the world, when if you are keeping up with the Joneses spiritually, right, the spiritual Joneses, Joneses you can see that it's only evils. You can see that yeah, the, the 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 famine of the word is about to happen. Yeah, World War Three is is taking shape. Yeah, they're about to push this new digital, uh, uh, you know, identification and in, in this new digital um financial system to where you're gonna need that karagma in order to buy and sell. Okay, that's what that that is what is happening right now. All right, that's why the book of in the book of Habakkuk it said that what I will set upon my watch. Right. I was set upon the tower and watch. Let me get that. Um, Habakkuk two, verse one. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. All right. Why the tower? Because a tower in the ancient world was used in order to be able to see impending dangers. Right. Far off to be able to see a far off. Although it may not, you know, there's no danger in, uh, imminent in the city. But if you're on a watchtower and you see an army of a hundred, you know, a uh, hundred million troops coming, just you know, throwing out a crazy number. But you see an army of a, uh, uh, you know, a large army coming towards you. Although the people down in the city may be laughing and joyous and having fun and thinking everything is safe and, and peace, you can see, oh nah, it, peace is this. This is about to end. It's about to get uh, crazy. It's about to get. And if people are not prepared, right? What is going to happen? You're going to get slaughtered. You're going to get ran through. So the prophets are watchmen, right? That the Lord set up to watch what is what is coming and to warn it. And that is why it's imperative as a watchman to do so, because as it says in the book of Ezekiel, the third chapter, if you don't warn, then the blood is going to be upon your hand, right? They're still going to die. Those people that, that, that didn't get the warning, they're still going to die. They're still going to be slaughtered. They're still going to have to pay for the wickedness that they've been doing. But that blood is going to be upon your hand, right? Because we did not give the warning. And that is the main job of a prophet, all right? All of these teachers and, you know, these, these so-called teachers and prophets and chief priests and, and deacons and all that, the main objective is to prophesy, to warn our people, to repent, to turn back and to let them know what is about to happen. All right. And if you ain't doing that, then you're not a prophet of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shot. OK, and that blood is going to be upon your head. So let's read on. It says, and we'll watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. See that I will watch to see what he will say unto me, because in order to hear <laughs> what the Lord is saying, you do that through watching, through the vision. That's why it says uh, in the end, 
in the same chapter, right? It says that for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. A vision is something you see, but it, it, it's not something you hear talking. But that's how the Lord actually speaks. It's through visions. It's through showing you things before it actually happens. You see? And that is why, once again, keeping up with the, 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 the spiritual news, right? Keeping up, up to date with what's going on is to your benefit. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a toil, it's a labor, but we are laboring to enter into our rest. We're watching so that we can be uh, prepared. You know, a lot of these, um, a lot of these truthers, they talk about stocking up your pantry. Well, <laughs> you got to stock up your spiritual pantry, okay? Because it, it, it's not a, it's not the the flesh that is going to save you. It's the spirit that is going to. If your spirit is is stocked, right? If your spirit is prepared, then that is what's going to save you. That is what's going to deliver you. How wish I said what? It is the, the flesh, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing, okay? Store up your treasures in heaven. The Most High, our Father, knows we have need. If we're talking about a famine, well, the Lord knows we have need. Our physical bodies have need to eat. But let's not forget that Moses fasted for 40 days and the Lord sustained him. You had a lot of, uh, you know, these uh, these Hamite African uh, pastors, all right, or could have been even Jake pastors, that they try to go out and, and fast for 40 days uh, to, to, to show that God is with them. And then they end up dying after, you know, 20 days. They don't even make it halfway through because it's the spirit that, that keeps you alive, right? Yahweh Shai in the flesh, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. So it's not an impossible task for a man to be able to uh, uh, live, to sustain, to be able to keep alive without eating for 40 days. <laughs> we have the uh, uh, evidence, we have proof through the scriptures, which we believe, right, is the word of God. And the word of God is true that the Lord can keep a man alive for 40 days without eating or drinking anything. But if you are spiritually not prepared. If you, if you're, if your guide, if your, uh, uh, if your faith isn't in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, then no, he's not going to keep you. That's why going back to um, Second Ezra 16th chapter, it says in the verse 75 that what, uh, be not afraid, neither doubt, for God is your guide and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts. Saith the Lord, let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. OK, so he is the God of them that do his will. Did not Yahweh I say that if you love me, keep my commandments. OK, but all in all, when you are able to when you are consistently watching, when you are consistently staying, uh, staying, uh, uh, you know, abreast on what is going on in the spirit, when you are con when you are consistently connected to the spirit. Let me go back to Ephesians. Right. When you are watching for all these things, then it gives you the what the um, it gives you the uh, uh, the reasoning so that fear won't take no hold of you. Now, this is the book of Ephesians, chapter five, verse um, 15. It says, see then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as a uh, salaki, not as fools, but as wise. See that? Because if you're walking circumspectly, which means to look around, to be to be carefully uh, taking heed, to be paying attention, then you're not ignorant, right? Ignorant meaning unaware. And that is what a lot of people, that is a position that this this society and these and this folly that is setting great dignity in the 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 the, the cares of this world, the surfiting and the drunkenness, all these things that is so easily of this world that that uh, attracts the flesh, that is what ultimately that is, um, is is really doing. It's making you a fool. It's making you ignorant to to the to the impending dangers. It's making you uh, um, not prepared for what is about to take place. Okay. So it says, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Okay, you can't 
really redeem time, right? You can't, which means to buy back. You can't buy back time, but meaning what? That you're using the time that you have, this liberty that you have, this grace period that you have, right? And to do what? To do what will help you <laughs> uh, uh, endure into the end. Will do what will keep you, you know, from the dangers that is coming. So going back to the uh, analogy of the, the the prophet on the watchtower and then the people in the in the in the uh, city. If you got this army coming towards you, that is ready to fight. They're not ready to talk. They're not trying to have any diplomatic talk. They got all of the latest and greatest, you know, technology to come and run, you know, ransack you. What redeeming the time would be preparing, okay? Because there's going it's going to take time for them to get. From wherever far off that they are at up into the gates of that city. So between that time, what do you do? Do you, oh, well, we still got time to, you know, to hit the, hit the, hit the club. You know, I still got time to try to, you know, uh, build my generational wealth. <laughs> what, how are you going to have generational wealth when you got this army that's coming to destroy your whole entire uh, uh, city? But there's not going to be anything left else for you to pass down once they're done doing what they do. And that is the mindset that our people are in, that they still think that there is something, that there is time after all of this evil. There is no, the, the time after this, this is, as Peter said, the end of all things are at hand. Okay. The fashions of this world fadeth the way. You got our people that are seeing all, you know, they're, 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 they see all of the, the, the carnage that is building up here in Babylon the Great and throughout the world. And yet they still or for some foolish reason, and it's because they're fools, right? That think that there's going to be a time period in this world after this. No, there isn't anything after this. And then that is why once that actual hell comes, once the Jacob's trouble come, they're going to lose their minds because they have reasoned in their mind that there is going to be a, a life here after all of this or it's not going to get as bad as it looks you see that is a foolish thought so now what i did was i uh just went to the definition on google definition of reason right a cause explanation or justification for an action or an event okay it says the verb that's the noun, the verb to think, understand, and form judgment by a process of logic. And the thing about the majority of people, the thing about the ones who don't have the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, they do not think logically. Okay? They're thinking based off of their own bellies, right? They're thinking off of, they're thinking based off of their own lust. They're not thinking according to the will of will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And that is what's going to get them caught and trapped and snared and not being able to escape because they don't know the will of the Lord. At the end of the day, it is the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh that will stand. He don't give a damn about, oh, I, I spent $100,000 in, in college and I thought I was going to be able to, you know, uh, uh, su succeed here. You know, I had dreams. I had I had uh, uh, aspirations. It'll, yeah, <laughs> the Lord don't give a damn about your aspirations. That's why... Uh, even Yahweh Shai said it, right? Not my will, but your will be done. In the Lord's prayer, it says what? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's it. It's only about the will of the Lord. It's not about your will. Even when we pray, we got to pray according to the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You got people talking about, Israelites talking about, oh, I pray that, uh, you know, America bounces back. That, that's, a, that's a vain prayer, man. And it's abomination in the ears of the Lord. All right, but before I start, you know, ranting on that, going back to reasoning, it says a cause, an explanation, or justification for an action or an event. And people, because they're unaware, because they're ignorant, because they're fools, when all hell breaks loose, when, and you know, one of the uh, other examples, right? When uh, you had you had the the AT and T outage, then yesterday you had the Facebook, Instagram uh, outage. I actually seen on on Rush Today. It said that the uh, it was a world, right? Let me see what the article says. I'm not going to read through much of the article, but it says the title says world hit by Internet outages. 
Okay, world hit by internet outages, and it was many many different platforms. All right, in many different parts of the world that was hit by these outages. Now, we understand why these things are happening. These this is all a part of you know the workings of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai to bring in these evils. But a lot of people they don't they don't pay attention to this, right? They don't see the bigger picture. And they and they're in this uh, normalcy bias, this false sense of, of security to think that, oh yeah, think you know, that's just that it's gonna get better, X, Y, and Z. Right. However, once and it will come <laughs> right once it comes to where the Internet is out completely. Right. You're not going to be able to go to the Internet to find out why the Internet is out because the Internet is out. So now you're start, or you're let's say you're all tele telecommunications stop. You're not going to be able to call. Somebody to find out what they know because you're the, the 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 device or the way that you are accustomed to doing that does not work anymore, right? If the financial, you know, if there's a financial cyber attack, you're not going to be able to go and get money out of the banks because all of the banks are going to be stopped. So this is what people don't understand that they think that once. Some, you know, once the house of cards fall, you're going to still be able to pick up one of the cards and be able to use it. No, the, 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 the house is done. All the cards are done. There's not there's not going to be a piece of it to where it's still going to be operable. All right. And that's where people are not going to be able to reason right in their minds what the hell is going on. And without that reason, without being able to reason, that's when fear kicks in and we can get that and we'll close it out. Wisdom of Solomon 17. Um, if it loads. All right. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 17, verse, uh, I'm going to read this in the uh, Good News translation. Um, verse 11, it says, Wickedness is cowardly in itself and stands self condemned. Because who are the ones that are going to be caught in the snare? Right? Remember, Yahweh Shai said that because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them. So the them is the ones that are going to be uh, um, that are not going to be kept are the ones that did not keep the word of Yahweh Shai's uh, patience. Right. Those are the ones that that ignored it. Ones that thought that, oh, uh, this is this is a vision for a far off. That this is not going to affect me, or y'all are over exaggerating. The scripture says that it's going to be a time like never before. You can't over exaggerate a time like never before. <laughs> there's, there's there's no way to to uh, uh, hype you know over hype that. You see, there's no way to over hype that it's going to be so bad that we're going to need divine intervention in order to be delivered. You can't you can't uh, what does it say? I can't stress it enough. And that is what the Lord has in the spirits of the prophets to do, to keep stressing how bad it's going to be. And we don't even know how bad it's going to be, but we can only stress that it's going to be the worst thing that you can ever, you can imagine. It's going to be something where you're not going to be able to deliver yourself out of it. And that is the point. That is the key that you're going to be in a position to where any idea that you have to be able to save yourself is not going to work. Any idea. And that when, when when that happens, and if you don't have the faith in your how about Shema Rashai, what are you gonna do? <laughs> You're gonna go down to Egypt for help. Because self-preservation is an instinct in all all life. All right. Everything that lives, breathes, has an instinct of self-preservation. And our self-preservation is trusting in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. But your self-reservation, that's why Yahweh Shah said what? He that seeketh to save his life shall lose it. But he that loses his life for my sake shall save it, shall find it. The only way that we're saying that you're going to be able to be saved is by the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. But if you don't take heed to that, your, your reasoning is going to be like, I can save myself. And all that's going to do is just get you, get you uh, condemned, get you destroyed. Verse uh, reading on, it says, someone with a guilty conscience will always imagine things to be worse than they really are. 
Hey, and it's going to be bad, right? It says fear is nothing but the failure to use the help that reason gives. And the Lord said he's going to put your fear upon you because you're not going to have an explanation, right, for what for these events. You're not going to be able to say, oh, yeah, this is happening because of this, this and that. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, yeah, OK, I could see that. No, nothing's going to make sense to you. And on top of that, you're not going to be able to find out from anyone to you're not going to be able to find anyone to make sense of it. Right now, we're telling you through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai what the sense is, why this is happening. We're telling you the sentence, right? All of the hell, all of this shit is about to hit the fan because of the wickedness that this place is is engulfed in. Because it is the time of the Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai's vengeance. And if you don't understand that, then nothing else you hear is going to make sense. So it says fear is nothing but the failure to use the help that reason gives. And we have the reason. And that is a beautiful position to be in because if you have the reason of something, then the fear goes away. You don't have the fear of it. It says when you lack the confidence to rely on reason, you give in to the fears caused by ignorance. OK, and that's why when when any type of calamity or catastrophe happens, people always say, what? Oh, my God, what is going on? Because they are ignorant. They don't know. You think, you know, during the, the, the certain event that happened 20, what, 23 years ago that uh, certain officials, right, certain presidents during that time. You think they was in fear of what ha what happened or took place in New York City? They show you they show you um, when uh, George W. Bush got the um, got the got the news. He didn't look afraid. He didn't look oh my how oh. he didn't he didn't look you know uh, 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 discombobulated because he already knew. And in that is position that you know we hope to be in, man. Because as it says in uh, Isaiah 33rd chapter, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding shall be the stability of thy times. When you have the knowledge, the understanding, and the wisdom, what is going on, why it's happening, then you have, you're able to be stable. And on top of that, you have the faith that, or it says here, when you lack confidence to rely on, on reason, right? Because wicked people, <laughs> it, it's, they, they, it, may, it might be their ignorance, but they can't be confident that the Lord is going to save them. They may ask for it. And actually it says that in Proverbs. Then they shall call upon me. They can ask for it. But they, logically speaking, why would the Lord save you when you didn't do anything that he told you to do? You didn't fear him. You didn't listen to him. You didn't live your life according to how he wants you to live it, according to the word, according to the scriptures, right? You can't say you didn't know. You got Bible. The Bible's on your, on your phone, Right. You got prophets all across the, the world prophesying these things. So you can't say you didn't know or you didn't have the, the, the opportunity to. He, he said, I gave you ample opportunity to, to, to uh, take heed, to hearken. You see, so you're not going to have that. They're not going to be able to have that confidence that, oh, yeah, I know the Lord is going to save me. OK, well, <laughs> we'll see. All right. And we don't even know, but we have hope. We hope. That's why we're prisoners of hope. And that's why we give diligence. That's why we have couldn't have addicted ourselves to this, because we understand that if the Lord doesn't save us, there is no salvation. There is no way to be delivered out of out of what is about to happen. So reading verse 13 again, it says, when you lack the confidence that rely on reason, you give in to the fears caused by ignorance. OK, ignorance is only bliss for a moment. But eventually <laughs> you're going to have to know now you're going to you're going to know what is happening. And once you know, the ignorance is going to leave you. And now you're stuck in the fears of knowing because now you're not prepared. OK, so, you know, and ain't it there, Lord willing, this was edifying unto the elect. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakakwadash. And until next time, Shalom.